Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about whitewater distortion. I'm constantly looking for real life examples to illustrate, you know, these complicated systems that we have in acoustics so people get a better understanding. At least they can become conversationally competent. That, that's a good first goal. So, you know, as we roll through this and you, you're going to see different things going on. So reverb is how long sta sound stays around in a room after it's been sung, spoken or played. You could think about it as it's overstaying its welcome. OK, if we want to relate it to people. Reverb is a measure of decay, how long it takes for a sound to leave the room. The harmonic tail, you know, how long it takes for the sound to leave. Fundamental strike and then we have the tail and it's a measure of that decay. With each room surface contributing about 17% to the reverb time, the overall reverb time. So RT60 is how long it takes for the sound to decay 60 dB. That seems to be a standard everybody goes by, okay? Because when it drops 60 dB in a short amount of time, it's not so impactful. And it has a negative impact on speech intelligibility, which is defined is how many words in a 10 word sentence we can hear clearly. We, we work in churches a lot. Eight out of 10 is our goal, 80% SI. So, and it's all about square foot and coverage, but reverb really, you have to focus on that 125 to 500 Hertz region. That's important. That's the most pretty, uh, important frequency range for reverb. It also turns music and voice into whitewater, which you're seeing here. And that's no good. In bass or low frequency, we call it mud and soup. But the same thing in middle and high frequencies, it's white water. It's, it's confusing, it's foam, it's foamy, I guess is the way to say it. So you can kind of get an idea. It's the result of six large speakers, the floor, the ceiling, and the four walls. And then it all mixes together to get the reverb time. So, but we don't want it. We want to get it out. We want to get it out quickly, okay? Must have a linear rate of absorption in order to do this, and you must focus on that 125 to 500 hertz region. That's the most critical region. Look at our foam technology. Look at the red line. Look at the smooth response curve there. That's what you want for reverb management. We have programs. You can do DIY with that curve, and we can help you with that. So DIY, DIY programs are available for all of our products. And this white water is a good example of what reverb does to speech and music. You know, it turns everything together and you can't separate individual notes and things just blur together. And that's not what we want because that's a form of distortion. White water distortion. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.